Hi, I'm John Gray and welcome to Mars Venus TV. In today's show, we're exploring who should make the first move. It's very confusing today in the dating scene because women are more on their masculine side. They're wanting to initiate relationships. They don't want to be a wallflower standing back waiting for the right guy to find them. And men are so hesitant to assert themselves because today, you know, you're seen as a, you know, a stalker if you assert yourself or you're seen as a sexual pervert if you're attracted to a woman that you want to have sex with and you want to pursue her. Some of the statistics are one out of three women will be raped in college, which is an absolute lie. But Dr. Mr. Rumsfeld and the government proclaimed that based upon a government study that showed that one out of three women will be raped. And of course, what was the definition of rape? If a woman is under the influence of alcohol, she's had one drink and a man kisses her, that's considered a rape according to that study. Now, this isn't to minimize that rapes do occur and they need to be avoided, of course. It's a, it's a dark side of masculinity, which unfortunately feels so angry and upset that they don't feel successful to get a woman's love. Uh, that being a minority, coming back to the general population here, what you have is a stigma on men. If they're interested in having sex with a woman, which we hope that they are, that they feel guilty about making the, the move. So quite often you get these shy guys, women, to understand the reason they're not making the move is often because they're most sexually attracted to you. And a part of them is a little embarrassed or ashamed that they have those sexual feelings and they're not just interested in having a relationship with you. So you've got to make the first move. And women are like waiting back, but if I make the first move, will he pursue me? Because you've all heard the story where guys end up feeling smothered. Are you pursued guys and they just take you for granted? And, and that's true. So what's the answer to that? The answer is something called proceptivity. Is give a man the message that you're receptive to his advances. You have to clearly pick out the guy that you're interested in. Don't wait for the guy to be interested in you. You pick out the guy you're interested in. You find him. You stand near him. You give signals to him that if he was to pursue you, that you would not say no. And that even means ask him out on a date. But I wouldn't ask him out on the evening date. I'd ask him out for an afternoon day date. That gives him a chance to sort of pursue and gain confidence to ask you out on the evening date. The secret here is don't rush it. And just to know subconsciously, when you're dressing like you're ready for sex, you're actually rushing, rushing it a little bit. It's always just show a little bit more than, than you would normally show show a little more interest in him than you would normally show to anybody else in the room. Locate yourself near him. Invite him to do something with you. Oh, we should get together sometime. Or, oh, that's such a great idea. What do you do? And then ask some questions about like, oh, wow, that makes such good sense. And that's flirting with him, which is giving him the message that if he pursues you. But quite often, men are really insecure today. The really good ones, the ones that uh, you want in your life, who have at least some insensitivity to the other person, they're often being cultured to suppress their desire, like their desire for sex is wrong. So give him room for that insecurity and give him confidence and support by putting him in that situation to pursue you. Don't fall into the trap of going, gee, you know, I just want him to be able to pursue me because that's not going to happen today. And actually, we're getting a more aligned with our biological history, which is what I go into, the whole evolution of love and sexuality in today's show. But the essence of that when it comes to dating is who makes the first move. If you look in history, females have always made the first move. Men are just showing their wares. At the Galapagos Islands, where you can see where evolution and the whole theory of Darwinism started, you go there and you see the male birds are all standing around on the ground showing how big their wings are. They're showing their stuff. And the females circle around looking for who do they want to be attracted to. And then they come and they find that male and mate with him. So it's like men's job is to be competent, to be capable. And a woman's job is to come and find him. And I know women, you want Mr. Wonderful to come looking for you. But you've got to leave your shoe there for him to go find looking for you. You've got, to, you've got to draw him out. And I go back into the whole history of this, all the way back to the ancient cultures where women are the ones that were more sexual and would pull the men out. The same thing today is that women have to own this position of their sexual authority and that you 
basically can draw a man out, but not just based on sex, which is in the primitive societies, is based on survival, but based upon emotional fulfillment. You're naturally drawn to the man who feels to you as someone of good character, someone you're interested in, someone you think would be a good spouse for you, or someone would be a good relationship with you, someone that you would enjoy being with. Make that your priority and bring that forth in that relationship. And for men, what you want to do in terms of making that first move is where are you sexually drawn? Don't you often feel the greatest insecurity with the woman that you're most attracted to and go ahead and make that step and get closer. And for men as well, they don't want to be too pushy. So all you have to do is just show a little interest and then you get a little bit back. If you push too hard, she can feel insecure. Women, if you push too hard, he can feel insecure. So it's a dance of a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and that's our coming together. And let's not be such a hurry to have sex right away, but to get to know each other a little bit more. And then what happens is the possibility of a longer lasting relationship. And this is a relationship which is no longer based upon procreation and sex, but it's also based upon love and emotional fulfillment, a higher evolutionary factor. The Darwinian, the Darwin evolutionary factor is just survival, adaptation for survival. And in our longer presentation for today, I go into much greater detail, the new evolutionary imperative, which is much, much faster and creates more dynamic change. And we're living in the midst of that change right now. So much quick transformation and adaptation, but not based upon survival, adaptation based upon a higher value, bringing spirit into this world transformation rather than adaptation for survival a transformation from what is to what should be and what should be is calling upon a higher higher intelligence a spiritual source that people today are consciously able to connect with so no longer do we have to follow these stupid rules of of the ancient days some of them are good for sure a lot of them are outdated we find inside our own sense of conscience our own bell inside that rings when we hear the truth and we say yes that's something that uplifts my spirit that's connecting to spirit We need to have relationships that are based upon awakening the divine inside of us, which includes our sexuality, includes a monogamous love with a a universal love for all, but a specialized love of sharing of material wealth and of sexuality and of time that we have a special person. So in this presentation, I also talk about the merits of monogamy, and that is the future of the world, not this idea that many people have, which is the future of marriage is a five to seven year old contract, because that's what's happening today. But that's because people are failing in their relationships. They're not aware of the new potential, the innate potential, which is emerging, which is the ability to sustain passion. What they're getting is a glimpse of that passion. And when they don't have the skills to sustain that passion, then they drop out of the relationship. And again, newness stimulates this new passion, which is an awakening of the spirit. But learning how to integrate that spirit into the into our material world to achieve success and emotional fulfillment and monogamy and the family unit. This is the challenge that we're faced with today. This is the dream. This is the possibility. And understanding these basic principles of men are from Mars, women are from Venus, and then going beyond Mars and Venus to this new world of finding balance between the sexes as we get closer. That's the message which I'm putting forth in this particular talk today. So hopefully you got some good insights. If you want to hear more, come to MarsVenus.com. Thank you so much for listening.